Look at those big, beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. John, this one's on a trolling fly. Well, that's a nice fish. It's a dandy fish. Ha <laughs> ha. That's sweet. That is on a pink and white fly. Scrapper. Yeah, you know, rainbows love pink, and uh, that pink and white marabou fly with those lead eyes it has a very unique action, and uh, man, that fish just, just crushed it. <laughs> oh, man. A lot of guys haven't tried trolling flies yet, but I'll tell you what, they are dynamite, especially when the bite is tough. This is Silverthorn Bay on Lake Shasta. Um, got a lot of fish in this area. Turned one tired out rainbow. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Oh, he came to life. He wasn't as tired as I thought. He was just kind of swimming along the surface. Very nice. wanted that fly. I wanted to let him go, but I think we're going to keep that one. He's all, he's all hooked up in the gills. There we go. Look at that beautiful fish. <laughs> nice rainbow. One little mark there, one little sore on him from Copapaz, but uh, that's a nice fish. It's probably 15, 16 inches or so. Just a beauty. And uh, couldn't resist that uh, that pink trolling fly. The trolling fly doesn't look too pretty right now. It looks pretty tore up, but uh, looks great in the water, and uh, he certainly liked it. So we'll get him in a in a bag and get him in the ice chest and uh, get the get the fly back down to around 100 feet. That's the pattern right now. So anyway, I can't complain. It's not an easy bite out here. We've got some wind. Um, it's been a little difficult, but overall, man, I'm catching. Folks, Kel Kellogg here. Now I'm going to warn you, there's some noise in the background. It's a real high-pitched engine of some kind. It sounds too small to be a motorcycle or a chainsaw. Hear it right there? So I, I think it's some kind of remote control car or something, but uh, at least they're having some fun. They should take up fishing and then they wouldn't have to play with toys. Anyhow, along those lines, let's talk about trolling flies. Um, I get a lot of questions about trolling flies and, uh, you know, I still have a lot of questions about them myself. One of the things that comes up all the time is, say you, you're running a, a fly like this, this beautiful, you know, kind of shad shaped olive model here made out of rabbit hair and marabou. Question is, do you have to run this with a wiggle disc? Now, if you've been watching the channel, you know what a wiggle disc is, but if you haven't, I'll show you one. Here's a yellow marabou and rabbit hair fly got rigged up and that right there is a wiggle disc. And when you troll this through the water, it's going to give that fly frantic action. But there are other ways to impart action to the fly. And uh, sometimes you don't even need to impart action. Now my dad, long before, long before I'm back, long before I started trolling with flies, my dad would just take a, a standard woolly booger just like that. He would either put some split shot on his line or he would put a bullet weight on his line and he would just troll that through the water. Zero action or very little action, you know, aside from what the, the tail naturally had just going through the water. Um, yet he would catch a lot of fish on that. I remember him catching like a 20 some inch rainbow up at Rollins Reservoir 25 years ago probably on a fly just like that, except it was black, but just trolling it through the water with a quarter ounce bullet weight so maybe he was, you know, three or four feet down, something like that. Anyway, the trout smacked it and uh, caught a big old trout on that, that kind of do-nothing presentation right there. Now, 
having said that, I troll my flies naked with a wiggle disc probably 90% of the time simply because that's been so effective for me. But uh, you know, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you can team your flies. Let's go back to this, this olive shad pattern guy right here. This fly right here. You can absolutely team flies like this with a dodger. If you want to troll fast, you know, you might consider one of my big six inch fisheye dodgers. If you want to go slower or you want to scope out kind of the side of the boat, you know, you might reach for one of these Max Double D Dodgers, which has the different connection points, which kind of allows this blade to act as a side planer. You can rig it on the center hole right here and it'll track straight behind the boat, but you can put it on one of these side holes and this will actually walk it out, you know, to the side of the boat. But this is more, more of, a, of a classic kind of herring dodger shape. So if you want to throw your fly anywhere from say one to one and a half miles an hour, you know, you might go for a blade like this. If you want to troll faster, by all means, you know, reach for a sling blade or grab one of my big fisheye dodgers, rig the fly behind it, two to three dodger links behind the blade if you're not using a wiggle disc. Now, if you still want to use the wiggle disc, but you want the extra attraction of a dodger, scope it out even farther. 30, 36, 48 inches. That's going to allow the fly to work with the wiggle disc over here, but the blade is still going to be putting out flash and impulses that's going to draw fish in. Just like you'd use a dodger with a spoon or a dodger with a Rapala. You know, in that case, the dodger isn't imparting action, but it is attracting fish in open water. But as I said, for me, 90% of the time, probably 95% of the time, I am running my flies with a wiggle disc and I'm either running them, if the fish are very near the surface, I might just run a split shot or a slip weight on the line and top line them so I'm fishing just under the surface. That's how I caught that seven pound rainbow at Elmanor, um, not this October, but the previous October. But um, if I want to get down much below that, I'm probably using one of my hybrid lead core outfits. Um, to work, you know, the upper 25 feet of the water column. Although this summer at Shasta, when the fish were very deep, I was using my downrigger to put a fly down. I think the deepest fish I caught was 101 feet on one of my pink and, I think it was pink and white marabou fly. It was either pink and white or brown and white, but I know it was one of my lead-eyed flies um, teamed with a wiggle disc, just trolled naked in open water. And... Uh, Obviously, the fish thought it was a shad, and it was fish on. And I spent almost a week up there with my wife, and that was one of the bigger fish we caught. That one was just over three pounds, and uh, he jumped all over that fly. So, flies are extremely versatile. They're underused by most guys. Um, when you've got a fly in your line, and you know, you're at a reservoir, you're at New Maloney's, Don Pedro, Collins Lake, wherever, when you show them a fly, you're showing them something that they don't see as often as they see Rapala's or, you know, standard spoons, needlefish, cast master, stuff like that. And anytime you can show a big wise fish something he doesn't see on a daily basis or a weekly basis, you have a much higher chance of getting hit. Anyway, that's about all I got to say. Just remember, whether you're fishing with flies or spoons or grubs or whatever, Fish with confidence, but don't be afraid to experiment. If you think, man, I'm trolling this fly, but Kel always trolls his flies just with a wiggle disc, you know, troll one behind a dodger. And I didn't say this. Well, I guess I did. If you're, if you're going without the wiggle disc two to three times the length of the dodger behind the blade, I guess that would be like that. Two to three times back, it's going to impart that stop and go action to the fly. But if you're using the wiggle disc, scope it out a little bit further. But as I was saying, don't just do what I do. I have a lot of confidence in the stuff that I do, but if you're out there and you think, man, I think I could hook them if I got rid of the wiggle disc and ran this fly two, you know, two Dodger links behind the blade, I think that would be fantastic. Try it out, give it a shot, invest in, you know, 30 minutes, an hour on that. And the nice thing about having a two rod sticker is you could keep using what was working or what has been working on one rod, but you can also experiment with that second rod and really kind of dial the bite in. And you know, a lot of times my second rod is used just for that, just for experimenting, just for figuring out what might work, what could work, how can I use this bait in a different way. Anyway, I'm Kel Kellogg, I'm jumping off right now. Sounds like that guy ran out of gas back there. Ha ha, my fly still got plenty of gas. 
Um, anyway, I'm jumping off for now. I will see you guys again right here on YouTube real soon. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. I got something special planned for when we hit 10,000 subscribers, which should be very shortly. And uh, please click on over and check out the Fish Hunt Shoot Production Store. It is jammed full of trout tackle rods, reels, and more. Anyway, have a good day. I am out of here. I will catch you later. Kel Kellogg here.